Hi, this is Salman Alana and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 194 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that builds on the theme of compromise from the previous case, 193, demonstrating that sometimes what we originally plan to do may not work out, and we may have to settle for something less optimal, but still better than the current state. The patient was referred for PCI of an osteal LAD CTO. He had previous coronary bypass graft with an occluded graft to the LED. These are the pictures of the right coronary artery. This is the image of an occluded saphenous vein graft to the LED. And this is the dual injection. So we're injecting through a saphenous vein graft to the RCA that is patent. And then we're trying to visualize the LED. We can see that uh, there is a filling of the distal LED through septal and epicardial collaterals up to the middle portion of the stent. So what we have here is an osteal LED CTO with ambiguous proximal cap. There is a long lesion length. Essentially, it's all the way from the ostium of the LED to the mid LED. In the distal vessel, uh, we do see that uh, there is a bifurcation and there is another branch that comes off. And then there are the uh, collaterals that are from the septum, from the right coronary artery and the distal epicardial collateral. There's also the possibility of going through the occluded saphenous vein graft to the LED. So our plan in this case was to start with a primary retrograde approach through septals. If it didn't work, go through the epicardial and then through the occluded saphenous vein graft. And the great options did not seem to be very promising because of the blunt occlusion of the proximal LED, but that remained as the last resort. The patient's hemodynamics were good, the AKG was okay. So we did attempts to cross through the septal collaterals from the RCA into the distal LED. We used a Sion Black and a SUO3 guide wire, but unfortunately, we were unable to enter through the septals and get into the right coronary artery. And then, at some point, we noticed some staining on the distal portion of the posterior descending artery that was uh, due to dissection. So the wire has caused now a dissection of the PDA, which is obviously a big problem, given that the RCA supplies the distal LAD as well. The patient actually was stable, not just pain, no EKG changes. So we decided to change our plan. And uh, we had thought about the saphenous vein graft that was occluded to the LAD. We decided to try to cross through that. We used an AL1 guide, and then we had difficulty penetrating the proximal cap, but eventually we um, used uh, a Gaia third, and that punctured the proximal cap. We then switched to a Pilot 200. It is always better to cross the saphenous vein graft with a polymer jacket wire, and Pilot 200 is a commonly used one. And this time the wire successfully went into the distal LAD. Unfortunately, at this point, the patient developed chest discomfort and ST segment elevation as well as depression. And uh, now we can see that we have complete occlusion of the right PDA. We tried to wire through that area of dissection, but we were unable to do so. There was severe tortuosity into this part. So what to do? Acute vessel closure, unable to wire undergrade. Emergency bypass is an option, but again, a patient with uh, already a prior bypass, this is going to be hard to do on an emergent basis. So what we decided is to try a potential retrograde approach. We did an injection here through a Sasuke dual lumen to see the collateral from the LAD into the RCA. There was this epicardial collateral that seemed to be tortuous. But then after changing to a SUO or three guide wire, we were actually able to advance the wire into the distal RCA. And now it is close to the undergrade microcatheter. We had some difficulty getting the SUO3 to cross, but eventually it did cross into the proximal true lumen. We then advanced an undergrade um, guide extension. This is a trap liner that was advanced uh, further distally. And then uh, we were able to get the Corsair all the way into the trap liner. The next plan was to advance an R350, externalize and stand the PDA. But unfortunately, because of significant tortuosity on the distal LAD, on the epicardial collateral, we were unable to get the R350 through. So instead, what we did, and unfortunately it doesn't show very well, is we went undergrade with the Gladius Mongo wire and were able to tip in into the retrograde Corsair microcatheter. 
And after doing that, we were able to actually advance um, the uh, Caraval microcaster undergrade. And then we were able to essentially get the wire all the way into the saphenous vein graft and externalize an R350 guide wire. So we finally established our retrograde system. And then we were able to deliver a 2.5, a 30 millimeter drug eluting stent into the PDA covering the area of dissection. Unfortunately, there's still not good flow going on uh, through the PDA and we thought this might have been due to competitive flow because we had ballooned the saphenous vein graft in the meantime. The patient had some improvement but still continued to have some EKG changes. We then uh, um, advanced the Caravel uh, into the LAD and then now we tried to do some uh, crossing, retrograde crossing of the LAD as we had originally planned. We did a tip injection. Again, we have this problem with the bifurcation of the distal cap, filling a small branch, likely diagonal. So we tried with the Pilot 200 to get through that um, distal cap, and that was challenging. And actually, the guide wire seemed to advance outside the course of the vessel. And then with um, repeat tip injection, what we saw here is that uh, we now have a stain and we have some perforation at the distal cap. So we probably entered a small branch we did not appreciate before and now we have a small perforation, which is a big deal in patients with previous coronary bypass because it can lead to loculated effusions. So what to do now? Echo was unremarkable. There was no pericardial effusion. But again, echo is not perfect for loculated effusions. They may not show up on the echo and CT may be needed to actually make the diagnosis. We tried again uh, to see if we can figure out the proximal cap. We did some undergrade injections. We did intravascular ultrasound. But uh, there was significant calcification. The left main and proximal circumflex were very large vessels. To cut the long story short, we were unable to actually uh, find uh, the LAD on the IVUS. We tried to puncture with various guide wires where we thought was going to be the origin of the LAD. But again, we did not have good attempt, good success. And then we tried retrograde again, but we were unsuccessful. At this point, we decided to treat the saphenous vein graft, stand the saphenous vein graft to the LAD, since operating the CTO did not seem to be a viable option. We placed three drug eluting stents, and this uh, provided a nice result. And actually, performing an injection, we saw that uh, the perforation at the distal cap of the LAD CTO had actually sealed. And this was the final angiogram. Now there is flow into the RCA, and there is also flow into the LAD coming from the previously occluded saphenous vein graft to the LAD. We did intravascular ultrasounds of the saphenous vein graft, and actually there was a good result. There was good stand expansion throughout the SVG. So this is a very challenging case and provides us with many lessons. The first one is that PCI of CTOs in previous bypass patients can be fairly challenging. Uh, we had multiple issues here in terms of uh, calcification, proximal cap ambiguity, difficulty with the retrograde system. Second lesson is about the potential complications of advancing a guide wire through tortuosity. We're trying to advance a wire through a tortuous PDA, and that caused a wire dissection of the PDA that eventually lost, re resulted in loss of undergrade flow. What to do once we have a dissection? The key is to advance a guide wire through the dissected area to be able to stand and restore flow, but unfortunately, in this case, we could not advance an undergrade guide wire. The solution came from going retrograde through an epicardial collateral, which again is not the first choice in most cases. However, here, it worked well with the SUO3 guide wire giving us access to the vessel and then we were able to cross into the area of dissection. We did have additional challenges for the retrograde approach because we could not deliver the R350 externalization wire retrogradely into the guide to the right coronary artery. But uh, eventually we did the tip-in, so advanced an undergrade guide wire into the retrograde microcatheter and eventually advanced another microcatheter from the uh, RCA into the LAD and then externalized and put a stand that took care of the dissection. But we also have another problem. We did have a perforation at the distal cap in a patient with previous coronary bypass. Fortunately, in this case, 
the perforation sealed without uh, requiring additional treatment, which had been very challenging because we did not really have good access to this vessel. And finally, the compromise here was that instead of standing the LED as we had planned to, we ended up standing the saphenous vein graft, which is not the best uh, durable option. However, in this case, given the failure to recanalize the LED, we thought that this could provide the patient with some symptomatic relief and uh, it was better than not doing it. So multiple challenges, two complications here, both acute vessel closure as well as perforation, both successfully treated, the acute vessel closure with retrograde crossing and the perforation with uh, watchful waiting. Thank you.